So you got your first drone. Before you go out and make your maiden flight, there are a few things to consider. The FAA requires that you go to the drone zone and get your trust certificate. I left a link to the official trust page on the FAA site. There are scammers on the net that will take your money to award you the trust certificate. Using the official FAA page ensures that you won't get scammed. The trust certificate is free, by the way. You'll need to have your trust certificate printed out and carried on your person whenever you fly. The FAA site will also encourage you to download and use the Before You Fly app for your mobile device. This app has been replaced by the Air Aware app as of December 17th, 2023, which happens to be the 120th anniversary of the Wright Brothers' first flight. They also have a website that mimics what the app does, and I've linked to that in the description. This application will tell you if there are restrictions for flying your drone in whatever area you indicate on the app. If you fly in restricted airspace, you run the risk at best of incurring a significant fine from the FAA and, at worst, having your drone collide with another aircraft which could have potential fatal consequences. Another application you might consider is UAV Forecast. This app will tell you if the weather and conditions are acceptable for flying your drone. Again, it's linked in the description. If the drone weighs more than 250 grams or 0.55 pounds, you'll need to register it with the FAA. I have a link to the FAA drone zone in the description where you can register your drone. Once registered, you'll need to affix a label on your drone with the registration number and the expiration date. Adding your phone number to the outside of the drone is also advised in the event you lose the drone. The Pilot Institute Aviation Training website will make the drone stickers for you for free. There's a link to that in the description as well. Whew. Okay, you should be ready to fly your drone now. Another item to consider is a landing and takeoff pad for the drone. These are essential if you're taking off from a non-paved surface like sand, dirt, or grass. They'll protect the drone from dirt and other contaminants as well as provide a clear home point for the drone. Some drones, such as the newer DJI drones, will memorize the pattern on the ground at the point of takeoff so that when they perform an automated landing, they'll be able to precisely remember the location they took off from and land there. You can purchase these on Amazon and they range in cost from about $17 to $35. If you buy one of these, I recommend a weighted one that will not move around in windy conditions or you can be cheap like me. I bought this rubber and cloth welcome mat at Target on sale for $5 and painted an H on it with cloth dye. It's also larger than most of the Amazon pads, so if the drone is not accurate in landing, it has some fudge room to still end up on the pad if need be. Make sure you make a checklist for yourself to ensure that you don't miss any details that might interrupt or prevent your flight once you're at your chosen location. I've linked to an RTF or rich text file example checklist in the description. Feel free to use it or use it as a starting point to create your own checklist. And finally, Let's talk about batteries for a moment. LiPo batteries can represent a fire hazard when not treated properly. I recommend you research that on your own. A few guidelines for you are to never charge your batteries when they're warm. Let them cool to room temperature. It's also advisable to number your batteries and then rotate them in sequence so that they will all end up with an equal number of charge and discharge cycles. This will maximize your value for these expensive batteries and ensure you get the longest life out of them. 
I would advise using a label maker if you have one. I don't, so I use the number stickers that come with my kitchen water filter and then put clear shipping tape over them to ensure they stay put. You can always just write on them with a Sharpie, but that might impact resale value when the day comes you decide to sell the drone. I'm going to offer six tips for getting good footage, but nothing really in depth, just some simple things to think about. The first rule of getting cinematic footage from your drone is that there are no rules. Everything is subjective. Shots from very high up generally all look the same. Try to avoid these. Don't be afraid to fly close to the ground, just make sure there are no obstacles that you might hit. Try to have a strong center of interest in your shot. This might be a barn or people in the shot. Generic shots with no strong center of interest for the viewer are boring. Try to avoid making sudden direction changes while moving with the drone. Slow, gradual movements look better. By default, your gimbal will center the horizon. A more pleasing composition can be achieved by placing the horizon in the upper third line or lower third line of the frame like these. When you get home and look at your footage, make sure your horizon line is level. If it's not, zoom the shot slightly and then rotate the clip to straighten it in your video editor. Go out early in the morning or late in the afternoon when the sun is close to the horizon to get the best lighting. Don't worry if you go out and shoot footage and stills with your drone and get home and find yourself disappointed with the results. Good results take practice. Fly as often as you can to build your skills. I hope this helps someone out there. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching the video. If you liked it, please click like as that helps other folks find it. And until the next video, take care.